Hey everybody, welcome back to Never Watch Alone, where you'll never have to watch a movie alone again. I'm your host, Tim Lifeite, and we're back again. Sorry for the last week. We ran into quite a few technical difficulties, but we are going to still air our Titanic episode soon. But in the meantime, joining me as uh, always is uh, my very wonderful co-host, Sean. How you doing, Sean? Pretty good now. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, boy, we're still kind of trying to recover from 2020, aren't we? It's been... Uh, oh, yeah, but I just mean it's always a good day when I get to talk about movies with my buddy. That's very... Oh. Oh. <laughs> so, so yeah, guys, if I... Um, I really hope you guys got uh, the movie uh, ready for you, because as always, uh, there's a sync button below if you just don't want to hear us bullshit about it before we get started. The sync button's down there below in the description, as always. But that said, uh, we're getting a little lighthearted this, this week. Because uh, we're talking about probably one of the greatest of all time comedies, uh, the, the Zucker and Abrams airplane man. Like this is kind of one of the big ones because it's and I, I feel like we kind of need it too because we did <laughs> 2012, which we're like, oh shit, is this what's coming up in 2021? It's just that they the Mayans had the one and two mixed up, and then we did Titanic, which was well an entertaining but a very long and you know often dour movie now we're just gonna have some fun you know <laughs> which i feel like we need a lot more of we need fun disaster movies because because <laughs> uh, you know often especially as we're uh um mark has found sometimes it's more fun to watch a fun disaster movie than just a disaster <laughs> Yes. Oh, for sure. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, why don't you talk a little bit about uh, Airplane? What, like, how did you get introduced to it? Because I got introduced to it a, a, at a fairly late age, comparatively speaking, I think. Uh, I think so as well. Um, I kind of came to Airplane backwards because uh, when I was young, and I, I want to say probably by the age of maybe nine, ten. Um, I absolutely loved the Naked Gun movies. Yes. Uh, and so, you know, that then gave me a love for Leslie Nielsen. And um, I, I, however, you know, it wasn't until I was much older that I learned, you know, that his comedic career, which started here with Airplane, yep. uh, was, you know, a second stage of his acting career. That he had previously played very serious, uh, you know, stern male characters so almost like I, an authority parental figure yeah and and so it's very interesting to to discover you know that after the fact because to me he had been just a primary part of you know my comedic upbringing and you know also one of my not one of the best mel brooks films but one that i will always love is you know dracula dead and loving yeah. it because i love vampire movies and you finally have Leslie Nielsen, this amazing comedic actor, working with Mel Brooks. Yep. Which and you know then Mel Brooks taking on the comedic interpretation of a role that um, you know ha uh, was done in you know Bram Stoker's Dracula by um, Coppola, right? Oh no, uh, that was done by by Coppola. Uh, uh, the the role was done by Anthony Hopkins. Oh yeah, yeah, right. So watching Mel Brooks parody, yeah. A performance of Anthony Hopkins is just delightful. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, I weirdly I kind of just had the information s just spoon fed to me that uh, Leslie Nielsen was uh, a serious actor beforehand and whatnot because um, mm. you know my my parents fucking love this movie, especially my ma. I think my ma was the one who uh, really introduced me to the movie when I was like about you know 14 15 which is so bad such bad parenting in hindsight <laughs> but i mean it is but it isn't again like i know i was watching the naked gun movies before i was a teenager okay like we're talking like 11 or 12 at the latest right so you know <clears throat> yeah well i think it's just because my you know my my especially my dad uh because in college literally like they were you know spouting movie quotes back at one another like we mean br like breathe memes today you know 
Like they were doing the same. It's it's really actually kind of in uh, in uh, engrossing and uh, warms my heart knowing that our parents were doing the exact same thing with movies as we are today. We're just doing it with <laughs> with weaponized memes. <laughs> um, but yeah, because they were they were always quoting movies. Like they always told me, like you know, even as a kid in the nineties, like they would tell me like all these stories about how in their college days they'd be just quoting movies left and right and you know taping them on hbo on vhs so they were saving it for themselves <laughs> which was the early version of pirating which i was like good for you, fucking you dad i miss that version of my dad you know my dad actually had a whole drawer filled with vh test tapes and every single tape was just labeled in all caps star trek episodes ah. i miss that version of my dad i really do uh i re if if i could because you know he's he's still living in chicago with my ma and i'm out here in cincinnati so you know often i really it's really hard for any time to meet with the family especially you know in the COVID era um but i really 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 want to spend like a three-week period with my dad just binge watching and bonding over star trek the next generation because I grew up a Star Wars fan. He tried to get me into Star Trek. I just was like, no, Star Wars. <laughs> can, so Can I make a suggestion? Yeah. I feel you'll both have a whole lot more fun if you do Deep Space Nine. Oh, really? Okay. See, I I don't know. Because he, I know he watched uh, Next Generation almost religiously um, when it was on in the 90s. But... Uh, he also watched Voyager. He didn't. I don't think he was actually too much of a fan for DS Nine. I forget. I might have. To, I'm gonna have to ask but, him. Right, and he might not have been. But as this is, uh, you know, you want to have father son bonding. He's clearly a fan of Star Trek in general. Mm -hmm. And I feel that the wow, we're get, we're so off. Oh, it's cool. Like, like just, don't worry, we're gonna get back uh, onto it. I promise right. you. I, I just feel that, you know, for what Deep Space Nine is and your background. I feel that that's something you'll like story wise will find a lot more enjoyment and entertainment from. And then it's also Star Trek. So it's like, it's a good meeting ground for you to bond over. So it's like, it's Star Trek. It's familiar to him, but it's probably the most accessible Star Trek for you as somebody coming in, having not been a Star Trek. Fan. See, this is why I just want to spend like months and months with my dad, just binging and talking Star Trek. Maybe, you know, when he finally, finally, is able to fucking retire because this job because uh, he's been at ace uh corporation for like almost 30 years um and he's been he knows so much that i feel like he's never going to fully retire because he knows all the shit and he's the dude mm -hmm. that he's the dude at work that knows all the shit so if they take him away they're yep. taking away a huge part of the uh the equation so I don't know if he'll ever yep. fully retire, but I hope he does, just so I can bond with him over Star Trek. But anyway, getting back to the fucking airplane, <laughs> um, yeah, no, because like my my folks grew up in, like you know they were going to college in the '80s and whatnot. So to see this movie in the theaters in 1980 when you're in college was kind of like the best thing ever. So anytime this movie was even mentioned, they would just be like, start rambling like, oh, did you know Wesley Wilson was like a serious actor? Oh, this is all the movies. Oh, it's like based on Zero Hour. Like all this shit. And I'm like, me as a little kid who's still trying to fucking process Lord of the Rings that just came out. I'm like, okay. You're making me feel old. <laughs> but yeah dude so i think it was eventually uh because we had turner classic movies on cable uh which fucking love turner classic movies because a they were all about like the actual craft of film and they would show their movies commercial free and in their original aspect ratio do you know how fucking crazy it was to be flipping through the channel on an old four by three tube tv and to see Ben Hur in the slit that it was on the widescreen, <laughs> it was so ridiculous. So TCM was kind of a really great guideline of seeing all these movies. I think that's the first time I saw uh, Lawrence of Arabia, which is a horrible first time to see Lawrence of Arabia. Um, <laughs> I think I saw uh, Alien the first time on that network, and I saw Airplane 
the first for the first time yeah, on here. It, and you know, Turner Classic Movies is wonderful, and I'll never forget though, like the you know the major switchover that happened with 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 television and yeah, um, yeah. you know when I got really into cinema and having to explain to literally everyone around me, like parents, like, yeah. like elders, everyone, they did not understand that how they were showing movies on TV was cutting off the edges of the movie. Yes. Yes. And having to explain this to people. Like, I mean, people, young people now who have grown up with widescreen TVs their whole life is like, I don't think you understand what we were going going through. We had the four by three TVs yes. that we're having to like explain to people like, no, no, no. Like you want the black bars. I don't like them. It's like, but you're actually visually getting more. Yes. It's like, Gah! exactly. I, cause uh, this was, this was in high school. Uh, I took the only film class that I could. I was so obsessed with movies in high school um, as I am today. But there was only one class that I could take, and it was called Film as Literature. And my teacher had that same view about the fucking black bars. And I tried, begged, pleaded to explain it. I could have been teaching this class. Me, this dumb oh. amateur high school student, could have been better teaching these kids about film than the actual teacher who went to college and took film classes. How fucked is American fucking fucking American education sucks. <laughs> it does. However, I'm now kind of terrified because if the existence of amateur high school students implies the existence of professional high school students, and I don't want to know what that looks like. I do only because I hope that it will uh, eventually one day lead us to a higher plane of existence and progress. I mean, isn't, but wouldn't a professional high school student basically be those 20 year olds who keep playing high school students in films? Oh, yeah, but I, <laughs> yeah, I guess. But, but to be fair, and I know this is really off topic, but The Breakfast Club is still a fucking great movie. So, in your face. <laughs> I mean, it's only in my face if I was going to negate that argument. Which I <laughs> That's very true. It's hard to do, like uh, talk down on any John Hughes movie, really. But you know, that's also maybe coming from as like a astute Chicagoan. Um, but yeah, no. Any the thing about Airplane is, uh, yeah. So I yeah we so I that, that was the first exposure. It's I, as random as this conversation. So let's get into it. Honestly, you know what? We've seen weirder things in 2020. So and. Plus, if you guys are actually listening still, that just means you like us. And if you like us, we love you. But in a really, you know, wonderful... I'm making it weird now. <laughs> now? <laughs> like you don't always? Yeah. Well, you know, if honestly, if it weren't weird, it wouldn't be entertaining. Now, would it? I mean, that, yeah, valid. exactly. But yeah, so I watched this sort of the first time on uh, TCM. Uh, you know, uncut, uncensored, as aspect ratio to everything, and I'm like, "Wow, that was fucking wild." Also, were those titties? <laughs> <laughs> Just, yeah, it was a really weird first experience, uh, especially watching it with my folks at the age of like 12, 13. But uh, it's come to become like one of my favorite comedy well maybe not one of my favorite comedies really um like i think uh that would still go to like young frankenstein and the world's end and things like that but uh yeah this is definitely i definitely it, it's kind of like how i feel about empire strikes back it's not my personal favorite that very distinctly belongs to return of the jedi fight me but i still acknowledge that empire is still the best you know what i mean like you yeah. have those oh, no, I, I, i'm the same way like I, I get why people love empire although my favorite unaltered of course is still go is still the original i love new hope i think it's fantastic dope dope um but yeah it, it's it's kind of that thing where we're like yeah we acknowledge that you know we're in the presence air of airplane one of the greatest cinematic comedies ever made but is it my favorite not really I really hope that, but I really hope for those of you who are listening out there, it is your favorite, and you're going to enjoy watching I mean, it, it with but us. It doesn't have to, like, it doesn't have to be a favorite. And for me, what makes a comedy great is if 
it's a comedy you never mind revisiting. Yes. Because a lot of comedies only play well once. That's... And that's just an airplane, like, uh, you know, to, to me, like Mel Brooks films, like the Naked Gun movies. It doesn't matter how out of date or how much the time period has, has passed. Like, I can still put those on. And I will laugh and enjoy them and have fun with them. Absolutely, dude. Really, like one of the best things to sing about a any any movie, but comedies really in particular, is how rewatchable they are. But that said, sure. you want to actually you know rewatch it because it actually it's been a while since I watched this. So this will be let's do it. yeah, let's do it. So folks, if you got the uh, the movie, you got the Blu-ray, you got a DVD of it, you got it on streaming. I I, I think it might be on Net Netflix. I forget. Netflix, I, yes okay right so it is on netflix right on but it may not be on netflix by the time this airs who, so who knows who knows like by or by the time you're just listening you know really but if you uh, either way i hope you got a copy ready and queued up because we are going to get this bad boy started in three two one click and right away we got the uh, the gulf and western the most <laughs> evil company on the planet especially in the 1980s this was the reagan era's people this was the beginning of the end for us millennials <laughs> and we weren't even born yet and right away again this this movie the jokes are so on i swear to god yeah. this actually feels like the closest thing to a live action full length feature length episode of the simpsons because <laughs> right away we got the jaws theme with this great gag mm -hmm. which apparently is just a bunch of fucking I mean, if you look closely, you can kind of see it, but it's just a bunch of co uh, like uh, some cotton on a plywood bar, <laughs> and it's amazingly cheap, but that weirdly makes it funny. Well, but I mean, that's title drop. That's one of the things about the delights of cinema is that you can use all sorts of ways to create the the look and effect you want. Yeah, yeah, and I also love the 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 old style titles which i want to say again we haven't seen zero hour or air any of the airport movies or even kentucky fried movie but <laughs> already it captures that disaster you know classic 1950s 1960s even like early 70s feel of those pulp disaster movies with the title cards so i'm going to step in here yeah the commentators you're hearing here. Oh, yes. The woman and man complaining about going on about the white and red zones. They were actual people who did the vo voice announcements for LAS. Yeah, weren't they also married? And beyond that, they were married. Yep, yes. They were totally married, <laughs> which I thought was fucking great because they did it. Like, if you listen closely, obviously, you'll hear them start arguing with one another. Also, I got to, I really got to love that. Um, the seventies is still very much alive in this movie, even though it was released in oh, 1980. Yeah. Cause you look at this and you're like, Whoa, <laughs> I absolutely loathe the religious people who just bombard you. Oh my so, God. Yeah. So like, I, I, I love that bit here where it just like, they keep escalating and people's <laughs> reaction to them keeps escalating in kind. In all fairness, they're a lot better today now because, <laughs> Oh yeah. Air, well, first off, I mean, you're lucky if there's any fucking people at the airport these days, um, especially in the yeah. world of COVID and whatnot, but you can't really just got to look back on this movie and like, we're pre nine 11 code days, such a kick. <laughs> oh my god look in the uh the the shit right. in the the the, the x-ray machine <laughs> body going through <laughs> i this is i love this <laughs> and you can tell he's got his arm underneath his jacket and whatnot right <laughs> but oh my god So you know, you know, it was actually really even funnier now that than anything else. The last time I watched this movie, guess where I watched it? Oh, actually, before I on before I say, this is probably my favorite. Was it on a plane? This is probably my favorite joke in the entire damn movie. 
<laughs> the fact that he walks away but still turns the meter on. But it's on. the entire movie. Okay, so we are at the three minute and fifty second mark. So this movie is about an hour. He is in there for an hour and twenty three minutes. Right. <laughs> I, I, I love that the, the fact right there that they hold on the religious guy to actually show him looking down at the coat. Yes. It's such a small thing, but it's wonderful. Yep. There's a lot of wonderful little details in here that you can pick up on. Uh-oh. No, no, no. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> the, so, the baby. <laughs> something to note here. Yeah. After watching that scene, yeah. many pilots reached out to the directors to be like, uh, I, I've almost done that, or I came so close, close that the t- front of the plane touched the glass. Which is so, so that is not unreal. Which is so fucking terrifying. <laughs> right? Like, Jesus, I really hope that standards have gotten better. Because, <laughs> yikes. That hairstyle, oh my god. I know, it's all so fucking 70s, man. Yeah. Um, although it's weirdly becoming, making like a, a weird comeback because of like uh, the resurgence in Star Wars uh, stuff. Because, you know, that was made in the I 70s, mean, right? So I, I haven't seen it and I'm happy not to. <laughs> well, I've been seeing like, you know, like a lot of the Imperial... Uh, guards and whatnot and all i'm referring to her hairstyle, oh okay not his so okay. we might be on a completely different wavelength here also come on how the the, the magazine labeling whacking material <laughs> dude can you imagine being the prop master for this oh i love this gag i love this gag so much <laughs> no the wife. so interesting yeah. He did not want to do this movie at all. Yeah. Like he when he first read the script, he was just like, This is trash. Yeah. They called him in for a reading. And by the end of the reading, he was no longer feeling the film was trash, but he still didn't want to do it. Like he came around to understand what they were doing. However, his kids read the script and were like, Dad, you're doing this movie. Yeah, I think his wife was <laughs> like that too, because they're like, dude, you really need to. Cause like I know this is really against your type and whatnot, but it's fucking That's brilliant. That's the point. Exactly. What is this gag? <laughs> what is this gag? This is such a cartoon of a movie. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, okay, so what I was going to say is before I was interrupted by my favorite joke. Um, <laughs> that joke. Ham on five. Hold the back. So many goddamn jokes in this movie. Um, no, the last time I did watch this was on an airplane. I was headed out from chicago to seattle and then i was taking a cruise up to alaska and i had my laptop on me and i realized i could watch a movie whatever movie i wanted during the flight and what better film to watch than fucking airplane interestingly at the time the only airline that optioned this for being an in-flight movie was a Mexican airline. I know, you would totally... No other airline wanted it. You would totally think that they would jump at getting this movie, like, for all in-flight movies. Uh, like, in yeah, flight. but any nervous flyers who are watching a comedic movie about a disaster on an airplane, that, that you could see why they're just like, I yeah, guess, maybe not. But, like, this movie is such a, has such a sense of humor about it that... Oh, yeah. I'd be like, look, dude, even if I had, like, a huge fear of flights, I feel like this movie would weirdly kind of comfort me in the laughter. <laughs> I, maybe that's I mean, just and me. It, and considering the disasters really tailored around, you know, a bad in-flight meal, and I should note, I cannot eat in-flight meals. Like, they smell so terrible to me, I tell them just, like, don't even bother. I've never had the luxury of having an uh, in-flight meal. I've had Cokes, uh, and I've had pretzels, and that's about it. Well, I, I was on a trans, transatlantic flight, so oh. uh, in those cases, they're like, here's your meal, and I'm just like, you can just take that away. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, the only time I was ever offered it, because it was one of the big 747 ones with two aisles and not just a fucking coach, uh, I, th- I, 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 I think I was like only about 15 years old, and I didn't have anything to eat. I just slept through most of it. So I've never had an in-flight meal. This is fucking great. Oh, I love it. 
Um, I don't what so is should we feel bad that it's specifically a black guy doing that though? Because <laughs> uh, I'm not sure. Because I, 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 I always because I, I always <laughs> that is still funny though. But I still always get a little bit weirded out by the jive talk scene later on. Like I'm not sure if I'm supposed to laugh. I think it's funny, but I don't know. So. Oh, yeah. Interesting fact yeah. about this is that there was actually, after this movie came out, there was a flight crew that invited Kareem Abdul Jabbar to sit in an empty chair in the cockpit for takeoff because they wanted to say that they had flown with Robert Mur with, with Roger Murdoch. Yes. Yes. I and believe I'm just it. like, that is awesome. Oh, dude. T you t if you were a fucking pilot and you were a fan of this movie and he was walking on, of course you would do that, dude. Right? I mean, it's, it's impossible Any not to. Any of the principles, you'd just be like, get in here. <laughs> and again, again, this joke is so <laughs> played out. I love this joke. Because it's, I love that. This I love how stupid this joke is right here. Oh, my God. It's so, <laughs> it's so dumb. Look, cause, you know, I actually remember when um, the uh, uh, the trailer dropped and the producers like were lo like looking at the early reviews and like the trailer and like mm. everyone's like, oh, my God, dude, you must have dropped all your best jokes in the trailer. And I'm like and they looked at him like, oh, no, this is not even the like even this isn't even a you didn't even see a quarter of the jokes that you'll see in that movie. Yeah, it's nuts. Stock footage. There's yeah, and and man, look, like boarding a plane off a tarmac, you, like you think of that as like so foreign now, but then like I've gone to other countries and I'm like, oh, that's actually still normal some places. So all right. Uh, see, I don't know if I should laugh at this. I still find it funny in a weird way, but I it's like an uncomfortable laugh now. Well, but they improvised most of this themselves. That is true. This was not scripted. This was them. That is true. They they were totally just like complete, for lack of the better term, because there's only one term. They were literally just jiving. <laughs> 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 Although I do love the the use of golly, where they're like, right. <laughs> like that to me, I thought was like really funny. <laughs> the music cues. <laughs> It's, dude, can you imagine just if, like, Matt Groening decided to do, like, no connections to The Simpsons whatsoever, just... <laughs> and it's still smoking! <laughs> but just do this entire movie as an animated cartoon, that, so, his style. And now you smoke, girl! <laughs> oh man you know actually i i'm i i almost wish that i could just like act really nervous or like because whenever i fly uh i'm a very tall man i am uh mm -hmm. uh six foot three so co riding coach is not comfortable i literally have to be yep. completely you know just upright and stiff for the entire duration so unless it's like an hour flight or anything, I'm going to be super uncomfortable. So I'm oh, really yeah. hoping one day when I do get the chance to fly again, someone just looks over at me and like, oh, you're nervous? I'm like, no, I've been nervous plenty of times. I live through 2020. <laughs> <laughs> I live through 2020. Of course I... <laughs> now this is just some fucking Abbott and Costello shit right here. Right. Abbott and Costello meets fucking Casablanca or whatever whatever the hell this is supposed to be. That's really the genius thing about the movie because I think you we uh what you mentioned before that um even though, you know, you've never seen Zero Hour or any of the airport movies or any of the other disaster movies that they might have referenced, you don't have to have seen those movies to enjoy this movie. Yeah. You just have to really love, you know, <laughs> Abbott and Costello's kind of <laughs> humor because this, this wordplay is fucking brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> the 
this is this has got to be a thing with actual pilots. Like, there's got to be some pilot named Roger, and he uh, out there who fucking hates this movie because he won't stop hearing the airplane jokes. And there's the famous airplane shot of what's clearly a model, but who cares? We love this movie. Um, but we also mentioned on our Planes, Trains, and Automobile episode that was reused for that movie, yep. wasn't it? And that movie, and you're going to see, like, throughout this movie, they're really going to be taking advantage of that fucking airplane shot because, as oh, you yeah. see, they reuse it a lot. <laughs> Because this movie, oh, and it's really crazy how much, how little this movie cost. I think it was only about three and a half million bucks. Yeah, and they did it in thirty-four days. That's insane. I I love this joke, nuns life. <laughs> Boys, surfs up. Look who's surfing. Dude, seriously, the prop master must have had an absolute ball with this movie. Yeah, creating all the gags and the background and bringing in the like the silliest out of context things like, you know, when they try to calm the person down, they literally just conjured up all these random props for her to be beaten with. That was actually her idea. Oh, it was originally always only supposed to be one person, and she was like, "What if we had like a like another person behind them, like a line of people, like a fucking?" And they were reluctant because they didn't want to hit her that much. And she's like, "Do it, do and it, bitch." They went with it, and it worked. Hit me harder, daddy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, it's it's crazy. Like you get a fucking conga line of pain. <laughs> Only in a movie like that can you have a have you can you have lines like that exist. <laughs> <laughs> I love the the uncomfortable dialogue they gave the old woman. <laughs> well, of course. I mean, because you know that's the great thing when you have such a such a sweet and you know disarming character, you can make her say the most ridiculous things. And of course, they have the uh, the fucking you know kind of transitions just to rub in the amount of corn and cheese in this movie because that's what this movie is it's a corn and cheese casserole oh yeah baked by a fucking cartoon <laughs> and maybe a little weed in there for good measure just to make things more fun and and funny <laughs> <laughs> I love this so much. It's so obviously stick. What is this? <laughs> you know, not gonna lie. You know, just sitting here rewatching this, it's making it's actively making me want to watch Kentucky Fried Chick, uh, Kentucky Fried Movie. <laughs> <laughs> just cat. God damn. Those Girl Scouts do not fuck around. Of course, it kind of helps when they're not like, you know, 12, 12 13 year olds and they're more like, you know, right. 30, th like these 40 th year old women fighting <laughs> that are still in their Girl Scout uniforms. Oh, the, hell this, yeah. Just... Oh, hell yeah, dude. I don't know about you, man, but I still love disco. So anytime this shit comes on. I am hitting the dance floor. I love how just stiff and jerky that guy in the yellow shirt that is. Guy looks looks like so that guy looks like me dancing. That guy looks like me dancing. I'm not making that up. I will dance like that. <laughs> I am stiff. I am not coordinated. But I don't give a fuck because I am here for a good time. Hey, you just got to get on the dance floor. <laughs> Damn right. I am here. And for staying alive, oh, dude, you better believe it. I love this so, song. Interestingly... Staying alive here is sped up by about ten percent. Yeah, you can. And they had to actually get permission from the Bee Gees to do that. Yeah, well, I don't know why they would do it though. I guess it's because they wanted to, you know, keep the pace really zany and quick and ridiculous and whatnot. Yeah. So, because well, you think can it's hear also it. Also, just. Oh yeah, but I think it's because, as you said, like they, the, it has this fast comedic pace, and I think just by moving it that little bit it will throw <laughs> anyone off to their expectation my knife knife in the back knife in the back <laughs> he's turning into a dance imitating them. <laughs> no idea oh this is great and just when you thought it couldn't be more cartoony man they gotta throw in the wee yeah. sound 
Yep. <laughs> well, throwing it back, was always, <laughs> that always got me. Because I'm like, because, uh, you know, you hear the sound like, wee, and you're like, oh, my yep. God, really? But then they throw it back, and all is right with the world. That's weird. They do that thing. They do. This is Dad Joke the movie, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Um, but weirdly enough, they make it work. Like, they do the wee sound, <laughs> but they throw it back, which somehow <laughs> makes that, that makes it funny. I don't know how, because the, the wee sound doesn't do it for me. But them throwing it back at him completely stiff is funny. Yeah. So I don't know how they do I guess uh, uh, one dad joke is not enough. you got to make it two. <laughs> a good dad joke is not a single dad joke it is two in one i hope you're listening dads out there <laughs> i hope my dad's listening because <laughs> god damn i know he loves this movie i love it randomly now there's fog it's like where did the fog Dude, come from you can where totally the see the, you can totally see the wires and i love oh, it oh yeah i love it oh yeah whoop Wow. <laughs> oh, my God. Seriously. Still, I'm... But the silly cartoon effects make it better. Exactly. You know, it's, it's so <laughs> weird. This prob this movie probably would not have been fun as funny if it was animated. Yeah. Look, dude, you can I totally... I mean, right here, the wires are so clear, but it, you don't care. It's so fun. <sighs> I should. I honestly should. Like, you you know, you could be... you, you if, if, if this was made, you know... Even ten years later than this, but, you can but hear. You can just tell from the center of gravity that you they had to be there. Well, no, you can literally see the wires. They are super close, visible, especially if you're watching this yeah. on Blu-ray or whatever. Um, and they cut back to the girls fighting, just showing that it's still going. God, but I think it's because, like, you know, because this movie wasn't made in like 1990 or whatever. That fanboy, you know, film fanboys like us aren't like, re-release it, but get, you know, you gotta CG out those wires because they take away from the... No. That makes it so much better in, a, in the weirdest of ways. Yeah. It's sort of like watching The Room now. Like, you know it's bad, but it's so fucking entertaining <laughs> that you don't give a shit. <laughs> that's clear Again, that's clearly a dummy. It's clearly just, a, you know, an, a, yeah. a, a production assistant throwing a dummy. But. <laughs> oh, so, my God. I I love this running gag, but I also wish they would have done more with it. And by that, I mean, think of how much more hilarious it would be if they showed them constantly having to remove and stack and store these dead bodies someplace. <laughs> Or just make the deaths even more ridiculous and gruesome and whatnot. <laughs> right? <laughs> like, just progressive. I mean, they kind of do make them a little bit more progressively, like, gruesome and whatnot. But still, <laughs> I really wish it, they could have gone, like, even more with that. Because this movie is not a long movie. This is less than 90 minutes long. So, it's amazing how much they're able to shove that in there. But I love that. She's like, I, right. yeah, sure. What? <laughs> Who the hell are these kids now? <laughs> right? Is this just like a bit? Yeah, but it's a it's a strange little bit, but it works. Yeah, that's very true. I mean, God, can you imagine how many other jokes must have been on the cutting room floor? <laughs> <laughs> that that's they had a so... kid deliver that line. It's it's oh, to be fair, fair, it's not nearly as weird as all the cock jokes in the cockpit. Yeah, that's that was actually the big, Were they like, big turnoff for not wanting to play, you know, um, Captain Over. Yeah, K Peter Graves is like, this, look, a lot of this shit's funny, but that, sh but pedophilia ain't fucking funny, which I'm, right. I'm kind of inclined to agree with them, but in a very strange and bizarre way, they may, I don't know, maybe it's because this movie was in the '80s that that they can kind of get away with. That risque, you know, it's funny, you know, attitude. But that, because if you tried to write that same joke today, it would not work. 
So, interesting note, this beach scene was filmed on the same beach where they filmed the Planet of the Apes. You blew it up! Oh my scene. god, you're totally right! That's right, because now I'm... Yeah, now I look at it and I can't fucking unsee that. And see, this kid's right here. Like, you know, you always see those, like, romantic movies about sex on the beach and all these beautiful things, like... I fucking show him this clip and I'm like, no. Sand everywhere. Sand, Sand everywhere. Sand, seaweed, garbage, fucking whatever the hell is floating out the. The ocean's kind of fucking nasty, kids. Don't have sex on the beach unless you have, uh, you have like a shower station next to you, and a very large towel, and I mean really big. Suggestion. Stick to the bluffs over the beach. You still get the nice view, but you don't get the horrible experience. Yeah. Like, have a picnic towel, you're fine. <laughs> the fucking catfish next to him. Just kind of blurping for survival and gasping in the in the fresh air. <laughs> like, yeah, kids. It's, look, sex on the beach is fine when it's your drink, but it's so not okay <laughs> when it's your thing, for it, when it's your honeymoon date. Yeah, this bit. I want to know about cockpits, you guys. Tell me about the cockpits. Tell me about the cock. <laughs> it's so bad. I'm an adult. I promise you. <laughs> and then, of course, this great bit. I, I swear, I could see, now that I know that, you know, Peter Graves was really uncomfortable about those jokes, you can kind of see him holding himself back, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and then this brilliant bit, Laurie's like, man, I've been getting that, si that shit since USC, man. Now, wasn't this uh, uh, written for another dude? I think it was for a baseball player. I'm not sure. Because I could have sworn that this was uh, written for uh, another athlete. Oh, fuck. <laughs> oh, fuck. You do not. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, don't kids don't piss off professional athletes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Uh, I swear, like it feel again. This really does feel like Matt Groening looked at this and like <laughs> this is the kind of humor I want to do for the rest of my life. Because you know, I think this was. Uh, right around the time where he was starting to make a name for himself with like um life in hell which was his comic before he did uh the simpsons mm -hmm. and whatnot but i'm 90 percent sure he was looking at this movie as one of his chief inspirations for the kind of humor that he wanted to do uh. i'm actually kind of surprised we haven't seen a whole lot of uh um references to this movie on the simpsons because i'm a big fan of the simpsons and i haven't seen a whole lot of like you know weird parodies or tributes to this movie but then again that's probably because this movie is such a great parody in and of itself you know yeah and there's also been a lot of uh <clears throat> oh shit <laughs> there there's been some bad takes in it when people try to parody a parody yeah namely fucking scary movie and all those movies that follow we don't we don't really oh, talk I'm, about I'm those. I'm looking way back at the pirate movie. Oh, God. Don't you even bring that one up. Yikes. <laughs> Jesus. 
Oh, uh, yeah. Parody movies have kind of got fallen on the wayside because of movies <laughs> like fucking Scary Movie and, you know, all the... Uh, I, I think it was less the Scary Movies and more the uh, the ones that spawned off of it, which I can't even remember the names. Well, but, there's yeah, like, you know, what I'm you know about. fucking Date Movie, Epic Movie. Yeah. Meet yeah, the that kind of meet stuff. the yeah. fucking Spartans! Oh my god! Yeah, what the that, that fuck? style ruined good parody for sure. Uh, honestly, no, it really killed the whole because pa- it sucks. Because parody movies like this and Naked Gun and you know like uh, fucking Hot Shots, Hot Shots, yes, Part Deuce, um, all that shit were some of the most beloved comedies of their age, and now, <laughs> wow. <laughs> that's that's an amazing joke but um but yeah dude like those movies are what killed the parody movie genre because they were so lazy and fast i actually have never had a a friend of mine in uh high school that for the life of me said he thought meet the spartans was funny yeah i i i uh mm. I, it, it hurts my brain when I think about that there are people like that. <laughs> <laughs> what, what was this? What was this bit again? It's a, it's a guy who thinks he's Ethel Merman. <laughs> and I just got her for that bit part. Yep. Brilliant. Oh, now this is fucking funny. <laughs> no, you won't. It's because your coffee <laughs> sucks, lady. You know, that's the other thing is like, even though uh, most of these jokes don't always land, they still have literally. 10 more others ready for you to you know chew into oh, yeah. that it really doesn't matter in a weird way it, 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 in a weird way this movie should <laughs> <laughs> this movie should exhaust you with jokes you know oh, yeah. it should but for some god weird bizarre reason it doesn't does it nope it it, it works i don't i don't know how they're able and to do that just just touching back briefly on parody you know, I, I think a tagline from Mel Brooks is really what you should keep in mind. Never give a saga an even break. It's like, that's it. The humor of it is in the parodying, but, like, you have to parody what the movie was actually trying to do yeah. rather than just make something funny in that world. Like, no, you got to look at what the movie's intention was and parody that. And you got to be able to know what to switch out or to replace or to... <laughs> Or to, you know, change around in order to make things funny. Um, You have to have a respect and an understanding of the thing that you're trying to lampoon. Yeah, well, it's a whole thing with, like, roasting. You have to roast what you love. Exactly. And if you don't love something or if you've never seen something, then how is it ever going to (laughs) work? Oh, my God. This is... This kid is so fucking good. Just <laughs> and how they're deliberately diverting their eyes. <laughs> you almost got it. Ah, uh, relief. <laughs> <laughs> Again, once again, they're just getting their money's worth for that fucking model shot. <laughs> like this movie, co- this movie only we only got a budget of three million bucks. We're gonna make every shot fucking count. But in a weird way, I thought that because um, I remember reading up on uh, when we did our Young Frankenstein episode um, that they actually added th- uh, film shoot days just to keep going because the filmmakers and cast were having so much fun that they decided to add more stuff. I'm kind of surprised the same thing didn't happen here. 
Yeah, I, well, I mean, just I think it kind of depends on you know what what's going on and how people feel. But you know, I always love that about uh, you know the Jay and Silent Bob movie. They were having so much fun with Sean William Scott that they added an extra scene yeah. just to keep him around a little longer. Yep. Yep. Okay, so you remember how I was a little uncomfortable with the jive talk, and I'm like, I'm not sure if I'm not allowed to laugh. This I know I'm not allowed to laugh at anymore. Yeah. Because this like, is like, mm. yikes. <laughs> Although that yeah. joke does. There's some of them in some jokes. Like, the, the punch there is like, that's that's okay. But the whole basketball thing, yikes. Yeah. <laughs> yikes. And the Tupperware. Well, well, but that's just it. It's like, that's one of the reasons I will always love Mel Brooks is because it's like he knew what he was making was funny when he was making blazing saddles, but he was also smart enough to know I cannot show any of this footage till the movie's done. Cause they'll stop me. So it's not yeah. that it's like making fun of stuff. You're not supposed to make fun of is fine. But at the same time, blazing saddles was co-written, you know, by, you know richard Pryor, like which de- actually doesn't get credit for but it's like yeah they were you know um it's like so when you look at the writer's room there it's like yeah you have people lampooning each other and that's awesome and hilarious but things have become so culturally sensitive that you can't really do that and even at that time you couldn't do that yeah if you let them know yeah oh god it's it, it, it's still i mean like it's one of those things now when you look at it and you realize the context that this was like the 80s and, you know, it, 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 it's this like... This really was not the 80s. This was 1980. This is the end of the 70s. Yeah. Like you can't say... Like, 80s are not 1980. This is the end of the 70s. Yeah, that's true. Because, I mean, especially when you look at that hair. The fucking Gatorade. Um, I love this <laughs> Okay, the, gag. the drinking problem. The drinking problem. That's a great running gag. But... Yeah, it's oh this this shit's fucking hilarious. <laughs> Cuz even worse they actually got him in the World War II Japanese outfit, which I'm like, "Oh my god." <laughs> but I like the fact that they actually showed the turning up yep. of the blade, yep. like they kept it just a little yep. bit accurate. Yep. So, yeah, this movie hasn't quite aged. Well, it, I will pot shots at Reagan. Love it. Yes. Although one thing that I do appreciate is that uh, this movie has aged phenomenally better than, say, you know, like fucking Animal House or and so much better than Revenge of the Nerds. That's a movie that is aged horrifically, you know, because hmm. uh, this was roughly around the same. Because, <laughs> yeah, that was really interesting. Yeah. When they show when this movie was released for Turkey, they dubbed that to Greek prison. <laughs> That's fucking great. I think also, uh, I, I think also when you see the uh, the guys talking jive uh, in Germany, they uh... <laughs> what is She's that joke? At home. Well, you, there's so many jokes that come back that you're like, why did you bring that back? And yet you're like, That's still funny. And of and course, he has, is. he has the stethoscope already in him. <laughs> but uh, uh, yeah, dude, like, there's so many jokes that are that come back that you'd think that's not gonna the come back. The start of a whole but, uh, second stage of his career, and it's amazing. Yeah, dude. Oh God. So, uh, the chicken or the egg? <laughs> oh my God. Oh, see, now that, I, I just got how he did that. Uh-huh. Yeah. He's not pulling out multiple ones. She's keeping the one in her mouth, and he's just yep. pulling them out of his sleeve. Although, that yep. was cool. That was really cool. <laughs> I love the fact that they don't show this symptom with any of the other people who come down sick, but all these other people come down sick. Yeah. Although, it's not, now that you mentioned it, it's fucking kind of crazy that we're seeing um, Leslie Nielsen this late into the movie we are almost at yeah the yeah we're at the 38 minute mark uh and yep. we're, it's more than a third of the way in and he finally shows up but he has become so inescapably notable in this movie yep roger <laughs> oh 
all the cheesy music, I love it. Boy, you can really feel how hard he's sweating here. I'm I'm betting the uh, the compact stage and the uh, the the hot lights uh, really added to that. Oh yeah, dude. So I think they were uh, at one point <laughs> negotiating to make this movie in black and white. For shots like this, when you have these two, you know, revered actors who are known for their very dramatic and serious roles, saying the dumbest things. I kind of wish this movie was in black and white almost in like an old four by three aspect ratio. So it made to look like an old Hollywood film and whatnot. But, you know, I'm actually kind of glad they went with the full color because now I, I just I feel love that, that he's era. got the sports goggles on <laughs> and, the, and the bottom athletic wear. <laughs> what is this? Pull up. Woo, doggy. We're fine. We're fine. Everything's fine. Did you eat the chicken or the fish? Or what? Actually, well, there was a great variation on this joke in uh, the critic, which uh, if you've ever, if you've ever seen, is fucking great. Mm -hmm. There's a, uh, a a scene in the movie where or, where jay uh, uh is flying uh coach and he, um the stewardess comes up and he's like chicken or fish fish please no i mean what is it chicken or fish <laughs> it's a fish with chicken bones on on the side <laughs> and it's like yikes see like here they they're doing this gag and i'm like i wanted to see them do this with the bodies of the people who, who got killing themselves <laughs> who got bored <laughs> I guess uh, I guess they're not uh, like I guess that's a pilot only exclusive thing, Sean. <laughs> like only pilots get that kind of attention. Fuck the fuck you passengers. You're only paying for this. That's their job, so they get special privileges. You know, when any time a stewardess asks you what did you have for dinner? and says it's of no importance they are lying out of their mind you should always be super nervous about that did you ever see that one house episode where uh they actually were dealing with a dude who had the bends in midair and there was like a panic attack among the entire flight that's a great episode i highly recommend it <laughs> the, fish, <laughs> the cartoon fish bones i swear to god yeah. But yeah, dude, have you ever seen that episode of House? Because this is exactly what I'm happens. I'm not sure. It's totally what happens. There's a because you know, spoiler alert. He the dude has just has the bends because he was scuba diving in Korea and whatnot. But he was having uh, very violently ill symptoms. But the entire uh, flight got it as well because they were mass panicking about it, and mm. so subconsciously their body made it a thing. <laughs> oh my god, this is so bad. See what I was talking about? This is when... <laughs> what? See, that's the the, uh, the kind of signage that happens on the flight in World Wolf of Wall Street. No fucking! This is an airplane, not a fuck tour with... <laughs> and, of course, a fucking blow-up pilot. Right? And I love how it automatically grasps onto the... Uh, the the wheel right. even though it's clearly a puppeteer that's trying to keep them connected <laughs> now i remember another mythbusters episode like they were like trying to because i think they got access to one of nasa's uh training centers where they they had trained pilots and simulations and whatnot um they went in with no uh, knowledge how to fly a plane and they're like trying to figure out is this actually possible can if pilots are incapacitated can a civilian with no flight experience whatsoever hail the ground control and land the plane safely for the entire plane is it possible and it turns out because you know the mythbusters adam savage and jamie heineman mm -hmm. they really didn't know a whole lot about piloting a plane 
and they went on a simulation. First time they actually managed to land the plane. So it is huh. 110% possible to have civilians land. We need to talk about yet another person who got a late career resurgence oh. as a comedic actor from this movie. Yes. And oh my gosh, we are better for it. Lloyd Bridges, man. Who picked the hell of a week to stop. Insert joke here. <laughs> right. That's well, I mean, I, I love him as the president in the Hot Shots movie. This motherfucker is the poster child of how we were for all of 2020. Like, just every <laughs> yeah. fucking week, I picked the hell of a week to stop sn sniffing glue. I picked the hell of a week to stop drinking. I picked the hell of a week to stop smoking. Just, like, <laughs> he was the poster child for that. Like, so many good memes out of that. Oh, shit. The autopilot is going down. I also love how they actually named the pilot Otto. Right. Oh, my God. This joke was so bad. So, again, yep. watching this for the first time with my... What is this? <laughs> what? <laughs> with the stare-ups and everything? Like... And what, what, and, but then bringing up the speculum, I'm just like, oh, my gosh. But this, like, watching this with my folks for the first time, I'm like, <laughs> oh, this is so bad. But that is so funny. <laughs> Well, <laughs> <laughs> and this is perfection. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. Otto's Otto's getting some head pilot time. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot so about the cigarettes. Oh my god. Although, to be fair, you probably wouldn't really need to smoke off if it was just a blowjob. I feel like, you know, if they went, if they were going to go all the way and get really sweaty and naked all over in that pit, the cockpit, which is really dirty the way you say it, maybe they need to light up cigarettes after that. But if it was just a blowjob, I don't know if the cigarettes were necessary, but it's funny. That's the point, though, isn't it? Is it funny? <laughs> <laughs> fucking god damn it you know if it, if it didn't involve like you know having to change shirts every like 15 minutes i totally would do that joke at parties more often <laughs> and of course i love how anytime the storm breaks out it's always the classic you know universal horror movie castle thunder mm -hmm. kind of sound now this is fucking funny <laughs> it's not until they she says does anyone know how to pilot a plane but and not the whole you know all the pilots being dragged and then of course this <laughs> moment what <laughs> what was that like I mean Why? I I mean it's well yeah we know what it was it was a I pair love of, the sword fight I sword, love the sword fight sword fight's fucking great and the religious battle yes and of course that great sound cut I love that cut but uh yeah really just titties like no reason <laughs> so strange and you know what the, you know what's even stranger this is a PG movie. This is back when PG was meant something. Well, it's because there wasn't it. PG thirteen yet. That's that's very true. But even you know, even in the eighties, like because you know this is still like late seventies and whatnot. But even throughout the eighties, even after the PG thirteen came about with Raider, with uh, you know Temple of Doom and and Gremlins, um, still like even into the nineties, even PG meant something back then. You know, it's yeah. not. It wasn't just so haphazard like it is now. But yeah, in, in like especially in like the seventies and the early eighties, yeah, PG was fucking hardcore, man. Kids' <laughs> movies were the best. Sick him, boy. Sick him. Sick him. Get him good. <laughs> oh god, he's still going at it. Get him. Get him. 
I love how that dog is just clearly trying to get at some peanut butter in the guy's hand. <laughs> like he's just clearly playing around and they just add this the shit in the, the sound yeah. background later. But that's that's great. <laughs> oh now this is my favorite. It's like uh, bored it's suicide by boredom. That shit's fucking funny. And it's not the turban, everyone, for anyone who might be thinking. It's totally just the gasoline. And his the look on his face when he's like, you're going? Please go away. Please go away. Oh. <laughs> Man, that match is really going for a long time. Well, actually, if you turn a match up, <laughs> up, up right like that, it burns a lot slower. But still, but that, yeah, the... that 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 nod of like, yes, please go oh, away. Yeah, so good. Ah, oh, thank God. Whoosh! <laughs> <laughs> so good. I love that. Oh, and of course. classic <laughs> classic line man uh, the 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 two lines that spawned a thousand 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 t-shirts and merch <laughs> <laughs> oh my god The other thing that makes Leslie Nielsen so great is he honestly sounds like those grave uh, uh, narrators of disaster films back from like the 1940s and 50s. Oh, yeah. Like he has 100%. that exact quality of voice for that sort of thing. And of course, now we have so many more gags here where this is clearly going on for like eight and a half yeah. like, or like 20 feet. And yet again, we still <laughs> cut back to that. And he's like a, th a hundred and a hundred bucks uh, into his cab fare, which, you know, for an Uber these days is actually not half bad. I'm sure back then it was like, holy shit. I'm sure nowadays, like in, you know, in 2020 dollars or 2021 dollars, he'd be up to like, you know, almost a thousand dollar fare and he's still waiting. <laughs> Oh, good. Dude, the the again, I wish I could have been a property master on a movie like this cuz it just lends itself to so much creativity and f just flat out fun. Also, do you notice this one the one dude in the uh, the the shredding shotgun? His his uh, eyeglasses is it's off of his ear. Yeah. <laughs> Such bad rear projection. It's hilariously bad rear projection, and I love it. And they're about to make it even worse. They're like, you know what? Let's just go all the way with this. Let's let's just do the dumbest thing in the background that's the most distracting moment of the yeah. entire moment. And, but like, the wheel's not moving, so it's just, like so out of sync. <laughs> now we just do cowboy mute, like random sock footage that makes no sense. Oh, lordy. Man, again, I really, you know what I really should have done when we started this? Or, you know, it would be a really great way to watch this movie as like a special feature with like the Blu-ray or something. Um, they should do a re-release of this, like a remaster, a remaster of the sound and picture and whatnot. But they should also have a joke counter in the corner. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, dude, because, you know, like uh, if you've ever had like the, uh, uh, the Scarface uh, DVD or the Blu-ray, it actually comes with... A, uh, a counter at the bottom of how many fucks are dropped, how many bullets are shot, and uh, God, I, I think that I think there's another one in there, but um, yeah, dude, like there's like an <laughs> God, <laughs> that's great. 
But yeah, there's like a little bit of a meter at the growing through the movie to so you yeah. can count all the bullets and all the fucks of the movie. How great it would it be to count all the jokes in the movie? And then you, because you know, then you could <laughs> go back and sit down. <laughs> go back and sit down. <laughs> I think, but uh, yeah, dude, you could like, uh, you could see the counter going up for shit that you have to look for, you know. So that character Johnny, yeah, maybe. Well, it's the Russian New Year. I'll have a big for all his lines. He ad libbed like that's all him improvising, and oh, I love all, it because he says for the, the better. weirdest shit. I know it's all for the better. <laughs> calm down just calm yourself <laughs> it becomes a con i love this bit it's so, so glad that she was like add a line like let's make it a line let's 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 extend this joke the boxing gloves the wrench a gun all these things you would never be able to get onto an airplane <laughs> even then this oh i love this oh right <laughs> this is the kind of shit you wanted to do to those people at the airport, right? Do you know how fucking cathartic that shit is to see? Especially with, like, you know, the pinpoint martial arts of fucking John Wick. <laughs> so good. Many bags look alike. I love Please that. I love that. You almost couldn't catch it because of laughing and stuff, but that Scientology was in there. Yep, yep. They make fun of all of the religions. It's great. Oh, and of course, this this is such this is such a great gag. I've done it myself, like to random people, like just have two pairs of sunglasses on, one to have on, right. and then the other to dramatically take off. <laughs> so good. Oh, I'm sorry. Things aren't so good. It, oh, my God. I forgot about that. He's a straight arrow. Like, oh, my God. I, I should be groaning at most of these, but because of the movie's overarching tone and delivery, <laughs> yeah, I'm able to actually kind of laugh at even the subpar jokes. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not quitting drinking. I, I'm. It's things are still kind of awful. <laughs> we have a history. You know, come to think of it, I think just about everyone, especially the male characters, read their lines as if they're reading as a narrator of those, you know, disaster movies and science fiction horror movies of the uh, the late 40s, the, the 50s, and the early 60s. That's a good description of their delivery. Yeah, because they have that very, you know, earnest kind of grave but old school kind of tone to them but those were always kind of inherently funny when they gave them especially for like you know the movies you would see in mystery science theater 3000 and whatnot but now because they know that those are funny they're really funny here because they get to say the most ridiculous of things like this Fire explosions funny. <laughs> I don't know why they're fu they're just randomly funny. Spontaneous combustion and and well timed fart jokes are still weirdly enough the most funny things in the in the human existence. <laughs> you know, I shudder to think of all the. Uh, them <laughs> doing her makeup but i i still shudder to that's think actually of the, uh, uh the mother of uh i want to say uh uh one of the directors um 
oh gosh, which one it was? The, Zucker, one of the Zuckers, or is it Jim Abrams? Yeah, the Zuckers. It was the mother of the Zuckers. Right on. But uh, you know, seeing that autopilot in his full view, I shudder to think of all the fan-made uh, sex dolls that were made in, oh, after gosh. this. Because I mean, you totally—he totally has like a fucking blow-up dick. We saw it, man, in a PG movie. <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs> this is such a stupid joke. This is such a stupid joke. Why am I laughing? This is... It shouldn't be this funny. It shouldn't be this funny. Why is it funny? Why is it funny, Sean? Explain to me. It should not be this funny. It shouldn't be, but I think at this point you're just, like, so into the silliness that you just roll with it. Yeah, you have to, like, there's a certain point, like, maybe about, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes into the movie, where you just surrender to the cartooniness yeah. of it. And you know what? I don't... <laughs> so... Vulture. <laughs> so, I don't, I don't know about... God, fucking... Uh, but I don't I, now. I haven't actually sat down and watched naked. Well, I have watched the first Naked Gun, but that was literally like fifteen plus years ago. But I haven't seen any of the subsequent ones after that. Um, and I gotta ask, like, is there any other movie besides this one that consistently do barrages you with these jokes, and they don't get stale or unfunny or tiresome? Because I'm really trying uh, to, like, press... Beyond, beyond the Naked Gun franchise, I think the only other one is uh, probably the Hot Shots movies. Okay, yeah, because I'm really hard-pressed to think of any other movie that uh, barrages you with so many wall-to-wall -wall jokes, and it doesn't become exhausting or tiresome or anything like that. Now that Okay, now this shit's funny. Of all the people to talk jive. <laughs> uh, By uh, the way, you must, you must revisit the Naked Gun movies. Yeah, I, I'm told because I really should. if I remember correctly, I think it's the opening oh, of this. the third one. A little hat? an Odessa step sequence parody <laughs> that you need to see. Yes, yes. You know, I think the only other movie that's kind of close, but again, it doesn't barrage you with as many jokes, but it's still a really underrated parody film. Uh, 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 Weird Al's UHF. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. That's another one. Again, it's not as many jokes as this movie, per se, but it's still kind of an underrated uh, uh, parody movie that a lot of people... And Weird Al would go on to do the intro song for one of uh, Leslie Nielsen's later films, uh, Spy Hard. But that's totally right. I forgot about that. Oh, check it out. That was the Godfather cameo. <laughs> <laughs> Use the force. Use the force, <laughs> Ted. <laughs> Man, I'm actually I'm I'm actually kind of really like almost uh regretting not smoking a joint before this just to <laughs> cuz can you imagine how much funnier this would be when you're when you're just absolutely baked? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Close the damn window. <laughs> well, I guess uh, that said, I picked a hell of a day to quit to quit smoking weed. No, I'm going to say it. Boo! 
Boo! <laughs> but they play it so straight, which is why I love it. Yeah, I, was, you know, I, I, I know you guys the look can't... on Leslie Nielsen's face is just serious. Well, I was gonna say you should have seen the look on my face when I saw that because I'm like, just like, really, really. Because I know you guys can't at, listening can't see this, but just like looking at that, like, really, just. I'm, I gotta be like, no, I'm going boo. <laughs> what, what? What is? Is that an ice cream? Co oh, that is an ice cream. <laughs> I did this guy ever do stand up? Because I feel like this guy would be fucking phenomenal as a, a stand up comic. I, I love this. Get the pictures. Get the pictures. <laughs> It's such a basic joke, but they always have. We got to get some pictures. Like, perfect. Uh, I really shouldn't laugh at. The, you know, I wonder what a lot of you uh, um, younger people who are watching this, uh, you know, like you know, Meteorite like these, lands like, near baby. <laughs> I really want to know what you Gen Zers out there who are listening, like, if just uh, go out to our Facebook page or go to the uh, get, do the comments in the YouTube uh, part of this. Just. What the hell do you think of all these dumb dad jokes? Because, oh God, this is so bad. That's so bad. But I want, oh, oh hey, check it out. It's Fox News. <laughs> <laughs> that's, uh, I think that's uh, Tucker Carlson's dad. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, I want to know what you younger people out there uh, think of all these wall-to-wall -wall stupid of, as fuck dad jokes. Because I really want to know if there's anyone actually who's j turned off by this. Cause, although, if you're turned off by a joke like this, fuck you, because this is great. This is brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, pass that over. <laughs> Woo! Cocaine's a hell of a drug. I just love the, like, she's judging the whiskey, but it's like, ripping lines. Well, I mean, you know, that's that's kind of the you know the same routine as the joke of you know we're nerds so when we go to co conventions there's like you know those people who walk around as like a, a fucking you know dressed as klingons it'll be like look at those nerds and they're dressed as stormtroopers right like so it's like shit like that that's just basic human behavior man that and you know vomiting uh, to uh, a nun playing the guitar badly. <laughs> okay, is it me or is that poor woman's blouse showing through a lot more than it should be? Yeah. Because <laughs> I'm like, yikes. Cause is she? Because I. It looks like she's wearing a bra, but it really doesn't. I don't know if it's the lighting or the costume department or a combination or anything, but ooh, <laughs> <laughs> wow, wow, insensitive. Okay, I love that they never talk about or touch on the fact that he was like filling a syringe, and shooting it into the coffee cup. <laughs> like this is never touched. It's like, wait, what? He's a doctor. It's okay. <laughs> It's kind of the dumb and dumber logic. Like, sir, you can't go in there. It's okay. Yeah, I'm a limo like, driver. Some of the best jokes are like ones they don't even like acknowledge. I, well, yeah, of course. That's the and plus because they don't acknowledge it, you can go back and rewatch this movie and discover rediscover that joke for oh, yourself. Because yeah. because some of the shits played so uh, straight, you don't notice half the jokes uh, up front. And that makes this movie incredibly rewatchable. I think that's the, the secret to it, is that you can have wall-to-wall -wall jokes, like even, <laughs> even stupid ones like that. <laughs> um, but you can have wall-to-wall -wall stupid jokes so long as you believe in them with the utmost sense of uh, um, earnestness, you know? Well, yeah, I mean... You gotta, like, keeping it straight is what makes it work. Yes. Because uh, it's kind of the same uh, thing of, like, su what su made Superman, the original 1978 movie, so great, is that it was played absolutely straight to play with, uh, so that the audience would accept that sense of verisimilitude. Yeah. 
which is a great word, by the way. I love that word. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that actor's just like, dude, what the fuck? I've been dieting. And of course, because we have to run this gag into the ground. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> you gotta do it, Ted. You gotta do it. That reminds me. Do you remember the uh, the name of our chief character here? Uh, Fucking Ted Stryker. Yeah. That's so... But I just... I love that they raked Reagan over the coals earlier and are now parodying that <laughs> win one for the Gipper speech. It's so good. They didn't even have the audience cheering in the background, even their, the non-existent... Well, they the sports music playing. <laughs> And I love the fact that it's literally just a blow-up doll that you just have to move out of the way in order to make the plane sh start shaking all over again. I'm going to have me a deep dish pizza if it kills me. Oh, man. <laughs> what a... Dude, what I would give to actually have some of Chicago's deep dish pizza. <laughs> it's amazing how that shit was published already, you know? <laughs> seriously i really hope that dude got a uh, did he ever get a career in uh, uh in no stand-up because i because I, I know he was known for doing this crazy shit yeah see this is why they don't have the this movie on in flight mo as your in flight movie but yeah apparently that's all he this is the kind of shit that he would do in like a kentucky fried movie Apparently, he was also in the uh, the sequel to this movie. Newsflash, did you know there was a sequel for this movie? Because I didn't until recently. Uh, I did, but I know I've never seen it. Uh, I, I hear it's not worth well, anyone's time. Well, I should time. say, I've never seen all of it. Like, I've come across it on TV and, you know, like, seen, like, a thing here or there, but I never watched it. Yeah, uh, well, I just read that uh, Abrams and the Zuckers were... Uh, never saw it themselves because they had no desire to. And when the <laughs> writers and producers and directors of this movie went out of their way to not see the sequel, that's kind of a bad, that's kind of a red flag for me. So I don't think I'm ever going to watch the sequel to this. Yeah. Maybe one day if like, there's a, like a high enough demand for people like, Oh, we really like your airplane episode. Do the sequel, do the sequel. Maybe then we'll do it. 
I guess we'll just have to create the hashtag contract airplane two sequel. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get that hashtag going. <laughs> Hurts, Budweiser. <laughs> <laughs> no no bad joke bad joke you go back into your corner and you think about the jokes that you make bad that's such a bad joke they're landing on ground but they're still doing this the duck Hey, it's the uh, director initials. Oops. Also, that is so not the Chicago skyline. Like they couldn't, <laughs> they couldn't have killed them to make a model of like the uh, the Sears Tower or something like that. Whatever. <laughs> but uh, can you imagine if this movie actually came with a uh, parody instruction uh, safety ins safety instruction video? Like, that would have been amazing if they had produced that. <laughs> Although, it still wouldn't have been the best uh, in-flight um, safety video that I've ever seen. Did you ever see the one for The Hobbit? No. There was a New Zealand... Because The Hobbit became made uh, uh, New Zealand such a major uh, uh, hotspot for travelers and... Uh, um, wow. I can't even... It's been so long since I even thought about a vacation that I can't even think of a word. Uh, tourists. tourists. Yes. See what I mean? Tourism is like dead. It's so dead right now that it's been completely erased from my memory. Um, but yeah, it's become such a tourist hotspot that uh, Air New Zealand actually produced a Hobbit-themed in-flight safety video with, complete, with cameos from Gollum and Peter Jackson. It was kind nice. of awesome. I'll I, I'll I'll see. I'll send a uh, put that in the description below for you guys to watch because it's 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 really fucking awesome, and it really makes me want to go to New Zealand even more. Not just because I want to flee, flee this fucking country. <laughs> oh, the tension! These cigarettes aren't gonna do enough. <laughs> oh, your chest is so great. <laughs> Yes. Just be glad the roles aren't reversed, hon. <laughs> because with that dress, something's bound to pop out. <laughs> <laughs> Easy there, Spots. Yep, been there. Been there, done that. 2020 is a hell of a year. <laughs> <laughs> I picked the hell of a wrong day. I picked the hell of a wrong week to quit sniffing glue. Also, someone get this guy some ice. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god, doing the la <laughs> the laundry. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Boy, I really hope they had some help for those poor elderly people. <laughs> Senior sex is not an easy feat. The sweat. The sweat gag is so great. <laughs> Dude, not cool. <laughs> Dude, for real. <laughs> That's another thing this movie gets right is they know how to make things. Uh, entering and en exiting frames isn't just inherently funny. Yeah. 
Dude, dude. <laughs> like, seriously, you, you think as a former pilot he would be a lot more stable than this shit. Cause, but no, seriously, like these these uh, uh, air flight controllers, they are trained professionals. And even a fucking civilian who has never f even been in the air before can land a plane, given the uh, the instruction. <laughs> oh, shit, that's not good. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> the sweat. <laughs> Oh, and this is just fucking great. The the people are following it down the gates. Although nowadays you'd have the luxury of. It. <laughs> I'm sorry, the sweat is so silly. But yeah, you, nowadays you'd have the luxury of those people like running down the uh, the terminals on those uh, uh, on the ramps to speed them along the uh, the extremely long halls. jokes <laughs> oh man <laughs> what <laughs> boy now that's a joke from the 70s that's the that's a 70s joke cuz me <laughs> okay did someone like put the, the it, did someone like put the record skip on him or something <laughs> someone get this guy some uh uh some fucking axe body spray whiskey on the rocks Have a nice flight. We <laughs> still going. <laughs> Weirdly, this sh it, you know it's like one of my biggest complaints about comedy nowadays, especially with like you know the Family Guy era. Is that joke? Sometimes jokes overstay their welcome, to the point where you're like, "Dude, just fucking get on." Like, you know, right. the Peter, you know, hurting his knee joke that lasts like yeah. three fucking minutes, and you're like, "Just move on." I'm so, uh, I'm. It's so strange that jokes like this don't annoy me, but jokes like, uh, you know, Peter just go. Well, because they cut it up. That's why it works. I keep going back to it. That's if it okay. was just a straight run, it wouldn't work. Yeah, because man, I really am not a fan of Family Guy. <laughs> they have one good joke, maybe per episode, maybe two, and that's about it. Whereas I, I can like just the original run, but I I was not a fan once it came back. Yeah, because I'll be like, dude, you guys have maybe one good joke in your episode and whatnot. Where I can just go back and watch The Simpsons, even the even now The Simpsons, uh, they'll have like five or six really good jokes. Of course, this shit is great, and I love how you can even see the fucking wire that salutes his arm. Right. How do you take off after that? That thing has no landing gear. Right. How? I guess physics, right? Just, and of course this this great shit. Oh yeah, <laughs> the <laughs> wink. So weird. Man, what a movie. And yet, still, the gags will still continue to come along. Cause, um, cause remember, folks. The I mean, even though this was you know pre you know made in the uh, the late seventies and whatnot. We still had after credits. Marvel yeah. did not invent that shit, I assure you. 
This movie and this movie has a really great one. I swear. <laughs> oh yes. Probably my. It's still probably my favorite joke, just because it's so long, uh, f- drawn out so fucking long. Although speaking of long, <laughs> like it, it's it's so weird because this movie is only like, uh, it, this movie is barely eighty minutes long, with credits. Yeah. Um. It, it's it's and yet it, but i don't know do yeah you, it's definitely it's under 90 minutes do you, do you feel like it should be a little bit longer like you feel like it should be like have some more no notes? i i feel you know i don't have a problem with hour and a half comedies as long as you know they nail it and do it right and you know you're not missing it the story's there and yeah. this tells the story in the time frame and does it well yep uh, uh, steven sucker you know, I actually just uh, read that he uh, he passed away really early. Like he only he he only lived about six years after this. Uh, oh he, wow! Yeah, he passed away from AIDS in the early in the mid '80s. Mm. That fucking sucks. Cause can you imagine what a great um, uh, comedy or stand-up comedian he could have been? Well, I mean, there was, I mean, um. All... There was so many artists of that generation who were lost to AIDS. It really is tragic when you think yeah. about what could have been put out into the world had this country handled that crisis better. Fuck the Reagan era, seriously. <laughs> yep. It was the beginning of the end, and we weren't even fucking born yet. Well, you kind of were. Uh, I wasn't. No, the beginning of the end actually was the thing started to be put in place by Nixon. That was just Reagan was when they hit the accelerator. <sighs> well, anyway, that was airplane. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so of course um, we're gonna end a comedy show on serious, serious shit. Uh, yes, we need to. It's. I mean, surely you can't be serious. Of course I'm serious, and don't call me Shirley. There's the line. <laughs> But yeah, dude, how's this movie hold up for you after all these years? Because again, it's still I'm, a movie that I can pop in and just, you know, laugh myself silly. It's a feel good laugh. Yeah, it's it's, it's a still, it's still fun. It's the uh, it's the movie equivalent of a ninety minute tickle. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if if there's a sustained tickle that lasts eighty minutes, and it's actually enjoyable, it's probably this movie to be honest um and yeah man like i still even though like a lot of the the jokes don't land again it's it's they barrage you to the point where you're really not laughing so much to at the jokes you're more laughing at the delivery it's kind of like watching a a rodney dangerfield performance well right that that's the whole thing like we were talking about when it's like uh you know when it cuts them all playing the instruments that's not funny but my gosh, Leslie Nielsen's delivery in that yeah. scene is hilarious. <laughs> yep. John Williams. God. So, yeah, man, like this, I think this movie has really has uh, aged quite well for the most part. There's a couple of jokes where you're like, I don't know. And it's also really weird to look back at the pre 9-11 era of American flight. Oh, yeah. Um. Like, cause I don't know if a lot of like, I don't know if like, you know, our, like the, our generation who are now having kids, um, like, cause you know, we have a couple of friends of ours who are literally just having newborns and whatnot. I wonder if they'll get these jokes. Oh, <laughs> this is great. <laughs> so good i oh, love that classic. joke it's classic. great and it is the the law lo- the 80 minute joke <laughs> it just goes all the way straight to the end i think the only other movie to do that recently was like toy story 4 where uh they had the combat carl who didn't get his high five until the very last frame of the movie love that shit but yeah dude uh, this is still kind of the, the the really great classic and yeah dude like uh, for you guys listening at home like if you uh, like either comment on the facebook page or on the uh, uh the youtube comments or wherever tell us about your favorite stuff about this because i know this is like a vat of good memories for a lot of people and i kind of want to hear them now so why don't you leave those in the comments below because 
I think we've kind of exhausted all of our good memories on this one because um, yeah uh well i think both of us or i mean like you were very clear how it ties in with your family see for me i love this movie but i don't have the fondest memories of it because i came to it because of loving other leslie nielsen work ah so while i, I really enjoyed this movie this was not a formative movie for me because i saw it kind of after those formative ones right but i really enjoy it because it's doing the same kind of comedy that some of those formative movies used mm -hmm. it was the 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 big the big bang of leslie yeah. nielsen and that's always worth witnessing um but yeah dude like it's 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 still gonna give me re really good feel good vibes and a lot of good memories watching this one, especially when you've watched it on an airplane itself. Like, when you've toted yeah. your laptop and a copy of this on your laptop and watch it for your in-flight, it just doesn't get any better than that, man. It really doesn't. I highly recommend it to anyone who can do that for your next flight, especially since they're so cheap nowadays. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's it for the today's episode. You guys can join us again for next week. We'll be doing another disaster movie. Won't say what it is, because I like to keep the, you guys on edge. I love to keep my audience riveted. <laughs> As I'm sure this entire year is going to bring. Oh, boy. But I assure you, it's still going to be keeping. But we're, don't worry. We're going to have a lot of fun with this. So join us next week um, for another disaster movie. I've been Tim. I've been Sean. And this has been Contract. We'll never have to watch a movie alone again. Peace. Peace.